Good morning. Uh, this is the uh, Senate Agricultural Committee. It's Friday morning, January uh, 13th. And uh, I hope everybody had a good trip in this morning. Kind of nasty out there. And, uh, but I see everyone's here, so that's great. Um, and uh, this morning, uh, first on our schedule, which you should all have, is. Uh, we have some folks from the uh, Vermont Food Bank with us to talk about uh, our food situation. And the committee is um, very uh, interested in uh, promoting our sustainability here in Vermont and supplying food uh, for our own uh, citizens. And uh, so it's, uh, and I know you folks uh, do a a lot of distribution of foods and so it's great to have you with us uh, so we'll uh, hear from Carrie and then uh, John uh, the director will be in uh, I don't know if he's coming just later or 9 30 I think yeah, so he'll be minutes. coming along and, uh, and uh, so to get started uh, we'll introduce ourselves uh, and so we no, put a name with a face and, and uh, so Brian. Yep, I'm Brian Collimore, a senator from Rutland. I'm Senator from Chittenden North. Brian Campion, Bennington County. <clears throat> Rich Westman, Senator from New York. And I'm Bobby Stark from North Orleans uh, County, do four towns in uh, Caledonia County. So you can see we, we go the whole length of the state and uh, and we're, uh, you know, very interested in, in, uh, in helping uh, our citizens uh, have adequate uh, supply of good, wholesome, fresh uh, food. So, uh, so Carrie, uh, welcome, and uh, we'll uh, probably have questions for you. And, uh, you know, we work kind of a loose committee. Uh, you know, it isn't Mr. Chair, or can I ask, or, you know, we just kind of blend in and, and uh, get our questions answered. So, welcome, and, uh, and the floor is yours. Great, thank you so much, and I'm really grateful for you inviting the Food Bank to be here today. And for the record, my name is Carrie Saylor, and I'm the Government and Public Affairs Officer for the Vermont Food Bank, and I am coming here from Linden. Uh, almost in your district, so not quite. Um, so I put together just a really brief slideshow that's an overview of the food bank. Um, one of the things that we realized, even though we're a relatively old organization that's been doing work in Vermont for a long time, when we cover the whole state, is that we do a lot of different things and it um, helps to sort of set a baseline so everybody um, has a similar perspective on what it is that we're doing. So I'll start with that. Um, please feel free to interrupt me uh, if you have questions. There's, I'm also a very informal um, presenter, and so you know, raise your hand or just nudge in. That should work fine in this room. Fantastic. <laughs> um, Linda, you'll have to, because uh, most disabled participant sharing, so you'll have to give me the ability to share my screen. Okay. Um, and some of what you'll see in this presentation is in the handouts that you have as well. So, yeah. recording in progress. Oops, I think I hit the wrong button. There we go. Okay. Perfect. You also. All I see is the date, Friday, January 13th. <laughs> Friday the 13th. Senator Renner, I'm sorry, we seem to have gone offline. I'm going to have to do it again. So, you folks, uh, do you distribute each week statewide? Or? Yeah, so I'll just start without the slideshow because yeah. I think uh, that's yeah, just where we we're at. This going, morning. We can get back. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Um, so the food bank's mission is much more broad than simply distributing food, but that is a lot of what we do. So our mission is to gather and share quality food and nurture partnerships so that no one in Vermont will go hungry. 
um, really with that goal of addressing hunger in all 14 counties um, in as many communities as we can reach. And we're primarily a food distribution organization, like you asked our other star. Um, but we do do some other work to help address food security in other ways. And I'll just touch on those, but really um, the thing that is most relevant to this committee is that distribution, um, the food procurement and distribution. Um, and we do that mostly through a network of about 320 network and community partner organizations. Um, those are you know, your traditional food shelves and food pantries. Uh, community meal sites use our food to prepare their meals. Uh, senior centers, after school programs, and we have a lot of partnerships with schools and hospitals, and those involve more direct distribution. So you do go to the hospitals and schools, so all the institutions? Not all of them, no. I think we're partnering currently with 11 hospitals and I believe 36 schools, but that one I'm not 100% certain on. I can find that information for you. Um, in schools, we do a few different programs, but the major programs are um, produce distribution programs, either our Veggie Van Gogh or a produce drop and go event through school systems. And then we operate a backpack program that provides food to children over the weekend who um, rely on, yeah. on school meals for their food and don't have enough access to food at home. Um, and I'm just gonna lay a little groundwork, are we, we that? Yeah. Well, it, you are live, but it's very, I'm sorry, it's very strange. Go ahead and go That's ahead. okay. I'll just keep rolling without it. Yeah, so I'm just, just going to lay we're online. a little groundwork for, um, you know, hunger in the state of Vermont. That is, you know, what we do is primarily to address hunger and food insecurity across the state. And in the House Committee, I got some questions about the difference between hunger and food insecurity. Food insecurity is really the data term. Um, that helps us measure how many people in Vermont have not had access to the types of food they want and need, the amount of food they want and need, have skipped meals, have you know made choices that uh, are not as nutritious and quality food that they would like to eat. So it's kind of a very broad data term. Hunger is really that individual personal experience yeah. of not having enough food or being hungry. Um, and I think that's something that all of us can identify with um, and is happening broadly across the state. So right now we're in a little bit of a dramatic moment, I would call it. Um, in the past 12 months, two in five people, which is roughly 40% of people in Vermont uh, surveyed, identified that they had experienced food insecurity. So had not had enough food or the types of food that they um, preferred or needed to eat for their diet. And uh, prior to the pandemic, that rate was about 9.6%. So we've seen this sort of ebb and flow over the course of the past two and a half, three years, where that number has gone up and down. Um, you know, but a lot of programs were available to folks to access additional food or additional financial resources, whether it was the child tax credit or rental assistance or a whole host of other programs that the federal and state government were able to help people through um, really the, the height of that crisis, as we move into this recovery phase, a lot of the folks who were impacted by food insecurity are folks on the lower income spectrum. And so it takes them a longer time to recover. Morning. Um, we know that because the last time we had a, a real bump in food insecurity was during the Great Recession in 2008. And so there we went from a sort of nine-ish percent food insecurity rate in 2007 up to about 14 percent. Um, and it took about 10 years for Vermont to recover from that crisis for, for food insecurity rates to go back down to that nine percent. This is a much more dramatic increase than we're seeing and we fully expect this will take um, years for Vermont. Um, to recover from as far as making sure that the folks who need so to get it. even with all that we've done and the feds have done, uh, you know, we instituted the Universal School Meals Program. Uh, that hasn't s slowed the, or lowered these numbers uh, much then. Well, you know, I think what that did was, was keep the numbers where they're at. Right? It did actually impact folks. So it held it. It held it, 
And now, as we sort of move into a new phase of normal, where people are sort of, um, you know, the assumption is we've recovered, but I think There's a lot of people have not. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's a good point. We've entered this real economic it, crisis. It's so sort of an on the ground look at your work. So you're Veggie Van Gogh in my community, right? Mm -hmm. What are the other areas where you might be in a community? Because I've heard incredible things about Veggie Van Gogh. I've heard people will go and just, I mean, it's, it's really interesting to me because it can be such a stigma, you know, but people, uh, I'm, I'm finding that that might be breaking down a little bit. You know, it's, it's just interesting because I, I am hearing the veggie van, I, I keep hearing from different folks that they're going to the van. They're going there, they're picking stuff up, they're sharing it with their friends, you know, so they're getting a bunch of things and then passing it along to people. Yeah. Which is great. And so I'm just wondering, where else would you be in a community in terms of a food bank? Yeah, so Senator Campion, you've named something really important and I don't want to miss that okay. stigma piece. So make sure I come back to that. Um, but logistically speaking, our network partners are the community hubs okay. for food access, whether that's meal sites, senior centers, food pantries, um, like so a Meals on Wheels, do you connect with it all? We do often connect with Meals on Wheels programs and they utilize the food that we distribute to okay. prepare the meals that they're making. So it, is okay. a, so it helps with the efficiency of um, the cost for food preparation yeah. in programs like that. Um, but you know, like a, like a small food pantry in a town that's open one or two days a week. Um, that they're often getting most of their food from us. And, you know, Senator Renner, you work, or you I'm volunteer in Jericho. So if you have anything to add, yeah. we're just very grateful. <laughs> yeah, please don't hesitate to hop in. But, you know, food pantries like the one in Jericho order from our system, and our truck brings it to their site and delivers that food. We also offer grants to our network partners, and that's a really important piece of it, particularly for Vermont agriculture. One of the grant programs that um, we've been able to really take advantage of or offer to our network so they can take advantage of is our Vermonters Feeding Vermonters grant program. And that food program is essentially, the goal of that is to purchase Vermont farm products from Vermont farms at market rates and distribute those to people who need to access the charitable That's food great. system. So yeah. whether it's through a Veggie Van Gogh, through our network partners, through some of these um, produce drop and go programs, yeah. you know, we're really trying to make sure that there are multiple distribution points. But as an organization, we can't do all that work on the ground alone, nor do we want to. Sure. Those community partners really know the folks in their community and can make sure that they're doing the right outreach to get people in the door, that they're offering the types of food that people need and want, that their hours work for the people who live and work in that community. And so it, it really, I'm here as an organization, but what we really represent is this broad network of folks across the state who are working really hard to get that food into communities. Could you tell us um, how, how do the farmer do they bring the food to your warehouse? How does that distribute? So there's really How two ways that out? work. Yeah, there's two ways that work. So we as an organization operate three warehouses, one in Brattleboro, one in Rutland, and one in Barrie. And those are big warehouses with like loading dock truck bays and you know large facilities where we're using fork trucks, yeah. right? So the farmers that we work with to buy in bulk for those facilities are large farms who can deliver pallet sized loads, right? Where we have, a, we work with a farm in Williamstown who brings us pallets of potatoes. And those go into our warehouses and then get distributed out either via the JD and Goes or we do um, produce pickup events regularly with our network partners where we'll show up at a parking lot and they all come to the truck and bring the produce that they want back to their site. And so, you know, or we're delivering it on a weekly basis on our large delivery trucks to those locations with the rest of their order. The other way that we do that work is that we offer grants to our, our partners where they can get up to $2,500 per grant. You know, they're using the grants. Then they use that money to purchase directly from farms in their community. So we're building that relationship between 
our local network partners, our food shelves, our food pantries, and local farms. And people love that because they go into their food shelf or food pantry and they see, you know, what Dan grew down the road and they know his farm name and they know his, you know, lettuce and his produce. And they're, all of our network is doing that in different ways. Some of them are purchasing um, CSA shares that come in on a weekly basis and people can come and shop the CSA shares. Some of them purchase CSA shares on behalf of families and the families go and pick that up from the farm. Sometimes they're ordering, there was a farm in Barton that um, the Northeast Kingdom Community Action contracted with and bought beef from. And so they would get that beef sort of on a semi-regular basis because they only had so much freezer space in their facility for people to come and pick up the beef. And so they had this agreement with this farm that every X number of weeks they would come and pick up um, beef from them. So it really, those grants really put the flexibility in the hands of our network partners and our farmers to figure out how to work together to make sure that people who can't afford that food are able to access Are those food. federal grants? They are not. No, they are private grants through the Vermont Food Bank. Okay. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> and we try to make the application process as easy and smooth as possible so that it isn't a burden on our network to get those funds to do that work. Do you, do you have any idea how much uh, or how many pounds of uh, Vermont products you I don't but I can tell you the dollar amount that we um, that we were able to inject into the Vermont economy was 2.4 million dollars last year um, and that farms is our farms. farms that is not any sort of economic multiplier that is direct dollars that the Vermont Food Bank spent on Vermont farm purchases yeah. sounds great so that's good yeah but yeah. we probably eat millions of dollars worth of food so there's room there to grow there is and i will say you know over the course of the no past, pun intended <laughs> pun intended this is a place for it um i would say over the past few years we have we have had to do much more food purchasing than our system you know sort of was traditionally built for Food banks are built to receive donated food and redistribute that yeah. food. Um, the need over the past several years has been growing at such a rate that we have been purchasing much more food. And this is where I may point to the handout that I sent you, or I handed you, the second page. Oh, YouTube can see this. The second page. Um, you know, there are a few different federal programs listed on here. The top program in that middle bar um, on the second page is called TFAP, and that's the Emergency Food Access Program. And that's a federal food program that the state of Vermont administers and the Vermont Food Bank uh, works together with uh, the Agency of Education. And that is a huge source of food for us in our network. Um, it provides what's essentially USDA commodity food that goes out into our network um, and can either be used at those meal sites to prepare food or can be um, you know there for folks to pick up and it is no longer like the old-fashioned commodity cheese and like a white brick that used to happen all you know a few years back um, the USDA has started repackaging that food it looks like shelf brands um, it is sort of like an off name you know it's like is it still juice or, or, or still there are cheese. Things. okay uh, there's lots of other things there's lots <laughs> of other food and and it really varies depending on what the USDA contracts with these huge farms around the country for um, and so that is one source that has been really readily available during the pandemic. In the past year, the amount of food available to us through that program has declined by 40%. We expect that decline uh, to continue. There may be some ebbs and flows in available food based on what the USDA um, chooses to do uh, and, and what kind of funding Congress gives to the USDA for that program. Yeah, I mean, they report to us, oh, we're buying all this stuff and trying to, you know, keep the market somewhat tight. And then you do read about the millions of pounds of butter that they have stored. It's, it's a little bit of an opaque system, I will agree with you. Uh, yeah. Um, so, the food shelves in my area, um, but a lot ask for for private donations is stuff like toilet paper and those things. Um, and what's never been really clear to me, 
I, I'm clear there's lots of help from different, all sorts of different places for the basic food items and, and the food types and everything. Um, um, is there any avenues for those things like toilet paper and, and basic? Um, I'm yeah. trying to wonder why those are the things they, they tell us. Bring those. So there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, one of them is that we do carry some non-food items, but not many. Yep. Um, so that is broadly a need. The other reason is that SNAP benefits, so what we call three squares Vermont here, yep. doesn't cover those items. Yep. And so people are having to use their own money to purchase those. And if they don't need to use their money to purchase those, they can buy more, right? So that's- I, I, I just bring up the toilet paper. I can't, no. <laughs> You need you can't that. Right, right. There are necessities that people require to live their lives that um, you know that they need to to, to get, and, and sometimes that is hard. We have started to try to sort of offer some more non food items, but it's a very different process. Yeah. Okay. Um, In the other, uh, that that's is, helpful. Thank you. Another question. Um, you know, we're we're uh, having a tremendous time with our waste uh, system, you know, it's filling up and you have to keep building more and people are upset about only like landfills? Like landfills? All right, like yeah. landfills? Okay. And and what we've heard and I and you know, it's just stores, nothing to <coughs> but stores will uh, take out product that, you know, maybe the dates run out on. Uh, and you know, um, Walmart is a very uh, community-oriented type group, and do they ever donate uh, uh, outdated or you know stuff, foods, things to the food bank that really are still good, but they're they're getting near their time limit. Walmart specifically is one I'm not sure about. We have existing partnerships. Oh, great. John is the really good one to answer this question. Um, we do have existing partnerships. Yeah, he can sit up there with you if you want. Bring a chair. Um, we have existing partnerships with a number of retailers who we do receive food from, donated food that is close dated or, you know, or slightly outdated but still good to eat. Yeah. Um, is Walmart one of our partners who we get food donations from? I, I'm not sure. Yes, so there's, uh, for the record, John Sales. Yes, and food John, bank. we'll run around the room. Uh, Irene, go ahead. And Irene Renner, and then North Center. It's Brian Collimore from Rutland. Uh, Brian? Uh, Brian Campion, Bennington County. Uh, Rich West, moving around. And Bobby Starr from Moreland. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize for not having been able to be here tonight. You know, that's fine. Uh, um, we have, we do do have a relationship with Walmart and do store pickups at Walmarts. Cool. That's the relationships with large chains like Walmart, Hannaford, Shaw's are managed through our relationship with Feeding America, which is our national organization. Um, so, uh, so we have we have uh, relationships to all those stores, and we actually have relationships with just about every grocery store in Vermont where we do store pickups. Oftentimes, it's the local food shelf that will, you know, we train them and give them the equipment so they can follow the food safety regulations, and then they do Recording the, the pickups there. We're okay. Okay. So <clears throat> you must uh, handle. I mean, if. If we can get pick that food up and and get it out to people, it isn't going to the landfills, uh, right. and so that's uh, good. Yeah, Whereas I can confidently say we are the largest food rescue organization in the state, keeping food out of landfills. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah, uh, Brian, <laughs> did you do anything? I'm just thinking of the single parent. Not a lot of time. Prepared things. Do you do any kind of, you know, prepared stuff, or even instead of just a bag of carrots, but it's kind of already ready to go? Anything like that? I know it's hard, but I'm just thinking of the single mom, single dad, you know, coming home from work and yeah. just Us real. When we all get home yeah, from work. Yeah, yeah. Who wants yeah. to cut everything up? 
Um, so the food bank itself doesn't, yeah. we don't do prepared we meals. We don't process. You know, there was, um, we don't process. We've, we've worked on projects around that. We do get some food that, uh, that is ready to eat our meals, you know, usually, you know, it's the, you know. Um, like frozen meals or something? Yeah. Okay. Or right, frozen meals or the meal kits where you you know you just add some ground beef and it turns into a meal. Um, we do get those and oh, distribute okay. those, yeah. um, and those are available at, at food shelves. You know, and um, you know there was uh, for a couple, the last couple of years, Vermont Everyone Eats, um, which was working with restaurants. You know, kind of a different That's model, right. yeah. um, which was very popular. Yeah, um, and so we've also had partnerships. Um, to explore like processing and preparing meals. Um, for a, a number of years, five or six years, we were working with the Center for the Ag Economy in Hardwick um, to, to figure out how to do that like processing. So instead of, you know, a five pound bag of carrots, they're, you know, small carrots or they're, they're coined and blanched and frozen. So you just heat them up and eat them. Um, the, the challenge is that it's just really expensive. Yeah. And, the, and the, act, the issue is actually labor. labor. Uh, you can't use volunteer labor because it's um, it's specific machinery, and you have to be trained on it. Mm -hmm. And to have people who are, you know, it just was too complex. Yeah. Okay. We also did projects with them to uh, create prepared meals. We did a macaroni and cheese um, pilot, which was a little, you know, a tin of, of cooked macaroni and cheese, and you just heat it up. Um, again, it was very popular of getting the ingredients and the manufacturing process at a price point that made sense just you know didn't work one way that we have had success doing that I just, yeah i just want to okay. add um the food bank in maine good shepherd food bank there's also one food bank in maine um actually has purchased a processing plant and they're doing a project with broccoli they grow a lot of broccoli in maine um, where they're they're um cutting the florets and blanching them and then working with Wyman's, the blueberry company, mm. and using their facility out of season to freeze it. And it's going to be a product that will be available in Hannaford. Um, and if you purchase it, it's it's going to, uh, the proceeds for the sales in Vermont will come to Vermont Food Bank. But that they'll also have that available at wholesale, you know, at their cost to us. So we can purchase that from them. And, Hopefully, they're hoping to expand to other <clears throat> food products, um, but they're starting with broccoli this year. But that's going to be on a limited basis. It's a, an off-season type uh, operation that will work when the blueberries are... Right, and the, the, when the broccoli is coming right is when the, they're not using the freezing capacity of the blueberry plant. So they're hoping to, to add some other, yeah. other crops and maybe do some, some processing too. And they're very open. In fact, I've reached out through networks to Vermont growers because they're interested in getting more product in, and they're interested in this being a regional effort. So we don't necessarily have to do it. Um, we can join in with folks in Maine. So yeah. there is some ability through Salvation Farm to do some, um, and I know there's some connection, but um, <laughs> can you describe a little? Sure. Bit? Um, yeah, Teresa Snow, who runs Salvation Farms, she actually started Salvation Farms and then became part of the food bank. And yep. It was part of the food bank for about five years. Um, and then she went back out by herself because it's a little bit different mission, a little mm -hmm. bit different vision. Um, one, when Salvation Farms had their, their light processing facility in, in, um, in Winooski, Winooski, yeah, uh, we were their number one client. Right. So we purchased most of what um, they produce again. It was it was economics. Even though uh, Salvation Farms was running as a job training program, getting folks coming in, doing the light processing and packing, um, it just wasn't sustainable over the longer run. So the so the what was in Winooski has and and and, and Salvation and, Farms is okay. looking at, is still looking for other opportunities. You know, I know they've worked with. Corrections in the mm -hmm. past, yeah. um, and just looking for ways to <clears throat> to take that agricultural surplus, get it light processed, so that it can come through.
through our network more easily. I wasn't aware that the Winooski piece in. Yeah, it's been a couple of years since they, okay. they closed down that facility. So, John, you, I, I don't think would remember, but I have taken a tour of the yes. Rutland facility. Yes. Um, and when Terry was mentioning where the other two warehouses are, so Barry, Brattleboro, and Rutland, what about Chittenden County? I was kind of surprised that there isn't something where 65% of the people live in Vermont. I, I smile because we've been trying for at least 10 years to find a place Huh. Um, to have a physical location. It's just really, really difficult to really? find the appropriate facility <laughs> in the right place. Um, we part, we've been partnering, actually there's a long-term project um, that we've been working on with Feeding Chittenden and the Intervale. And the yeah. Intervale, we've done some planning around it. The Intervale would really like to build a, a processing facility right there on their site and there's land available to Brownfield, so that's an issue. Oh, um, but, but we're, we've, we've actually done a phase one assessment. We're talking to the city of Burlington. We're talking to Senator Sanders' office about you know, trying to start finding some money for that. But it would be a, a project that would combine you know, the food bank, Peeding Chittenden, and, and the Intervale. But it's just been really, really challenging to find the right space. The, the, state right of price. Vermont, the state of Vermont likes to buy high and sell low. <laughs> you let, you let us know when you're ready. Well, I mean, I'm wondering if there are any buildings that the state owns up there in Chittenden mm -hmm. County that, you know, they sell it to you at your price, I'm sure. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, that could be utilized. And the other uh, outfit is, uh, you know, IBM used to be there, but now it's... Uh, Boundaries. We actually we work well, very closely with them. Well, they, you know, I've heard that they have vacant buildings uh, at their place, and and you would think that an outfit like those folks could use tax credits or something to where they could basically donate the the facility uh, to you folks, but then get the tax credits. Uh, on the, on the donation, and I don't know if you've worked, you have worked we, with them? We, we have, and we are, we, we have those conversations. Um, we actually were just, they allowed us to park one of our vehicles, because we have a bunch of people in Chittenden County. Well, yeah. Yeah, actually we have, <laughs> we have several, we have several people who work kind of out of the intervale space mm -hmm. already. Um, but we were, we were parking one of our company vehicles at, Global foundries. And I, I'm sure you have, but if you work with GBIC because yeah. they do have the mapping of the whole region, what there is available. So. Yeah, it's just our our needs are pretty specific. Yep. Yeah, I think you're on uh, institution trip. Yep. Yeah, you could look for state buildings up there that they'll give away to somebody. Um, <laughs> Before we go too far, I actually can we step back to Senator Campion's? You had asked me about stigma, and yeah. I, I have not covered that, and I want to make sure we we cover that before we find a building. Then we can do more. Um, but you had said how veggie dango is is people love it because of the low stigma, and and I I think one of the things that that pandemic did was that it made those drive-through food distribution events really common and really normalized them. They were not only in the news, they were, you know, locations all over the state. People were encouraged to go and pick up the food they need, you know, if, and want if they if they needed it and really weren't a lot of questions to answer. And that's how we've continued to operate our veggie van goes. They I used to ask what questions were asked. You said not many questions yeah. were how many Pass. people are in your household? Okay. And, and okay. How many households? Are and you how many households are you picking up for? That's, and that's it. Okay. That's it. Not how much money do you yeah, make? Great. What's your last name? Give us your great. social okay. security well, number. Food shelf does that, do they? Um, there are certain oh, there are. Okay. that yeah. some food okay. shelves do um, have people sign a self affidavit to receive certain foods, and it's that the USDA foods required. It's federal requirements. Yeah. yeah. Some local yes. food shelves also. Um, uh, well restricted to uh, residents of certain towns. So their town and surrounding towns, so they'll ask for some sort of 
the or, application or and they you, keep you on right. file. Or you can only visit a certain number of times a week or a month. Um, so those Veggie Van Gogh events, people drive through, they open their trunk, volunteers load, who have you know, packed these boxes and bags load them into the trunk. You know, for the three households they're picking up for, they give them three households worth of food and they say, thanks and have a great day. <coughs> so that stigma keeps, you know, if you're, no one's telling anyone their name. You don't necessarily have to prove your residency. There's yeah. really, it, it, it is much easier for people to feel comfortable. The other piece that we've heard from people at Veggie Mango is that they really love receiving local produce because they know it's helping farm. Yeah. Right, so it's that circular give back where they know that you know even though they're they're in need of assistance, someone is being helped in the process yeah. of it, and that is sort of um, something that that even folks who need food assistance really appreciate. So. Uh, I'm sure that that uh, Carrie has mentioned our our and I see the hand out there uh, the food bank's uh, three million dollar base funding yeah, request. Uh, and really, what um, what that that three million dollars will do is allow us to purchase as much local food as we possibly can. Last year, the food bank purchased um, two point four million dollars in local food. She did mention that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, we're talking a lot about local farms and people receiving that and doing processing and having facilities that we can we can really maximize the use of the agricultural resources in Vermont yeah. um, and that's really that's the the purpose of that base funding request is to be able to do that on a consistent in a consistent way yeah. our purchase food has increased pretty dramatically since COVID began and what about um, farmers I mean you know this time of year they can't be growing a whole lot we, so what yeah. about having that product year round? Uh, is there, should we be looking at a way to enhance, uh, you know, freezing and, and packaging uh, to allow farmers to have food for you to distribute year round? Is there, is there a bad time of the year when you run low on certain things that people, you know, yeah. nourishing foods that um, people should have, but we don't, can't grow it, so. Right. Definitely, you know, the seasonality issue, um, you know, we're not getting um, locally grown, you know, the, you know, greens and things um, during this time of year. We do year round, so we, for, when we purchase from local farms, we forward contract. Right. So, so this time of year, well, actually, it's probably already been done that we've signed contracts with farmers for next year. Um, a lot of those are year-round contracts because we're still getting storage crops. So we're still getting, you know, the the hard five, the squashes, the onions, wow. potatoes, carrots. Yeah. Beets. You know, we work with deep root co-op, so we're getting those constantly. You know, the folks, the the big. Um, big producers like uh, Maza and Paul Harlow, you know, they're all growing. Green screens. Yeah. Are they in on that? They're, they're all growing um, storage crops, and so we're getting those year round. We also can get the, um, the, the seasonal crops from other places when they're not being grown in Vermont. But, well, you know, like what Maine's doing, if there were the capacity um, to economically. Um, likely process and freeze or some some you know can uh, Vermont products then you know we're always on the market for those too. A few days ago they were showing um, the drought in California and you know there's cracks that wide in their fields uh, because the, there's no water and uh, the other so you know it's questionable how many more years we're going to be able to rely on on them growing our food and the other issue is you know vermont uh, uh, we're trying to be as green as possible and, and cut as much carbon as we can uh, and we're trucking that product from the west coast to the east coast and 
Well, I don't know if you end up having to pay the trucking, but it's very expensive uh, with fuel at five dollars or better a gallon. And you know, we're wasting or we're spending a lot of money. I wouldn't say we're wasting it because we're getting their food, but uh, we're spending a lot of money to get that food shipped to, to the East Coast. And, and, you know, we have great growing ground here in Vermont, especially along the, the river bottomlands. And in the, you know, quite a few members in the legislature would like to uh, try to get us to growing as much of our produce and and right here at home processing it and having it available to our people so uh, you know we get rid of the carbon we get rid of the worrying about whether they're gonna get water from some place and and uh, it's just crazy to truck product uh, 3,500 miles to, to feed our people. Yeah, we're very, we do pay trucking transportation, <laughs> so we're, we're very aware of that. You know, we also, we have a national network, so we're working with Feeding America, and, and they help. We have transportation subsidies. Um, we can, we sort of broker food within 200 food banks across the country. So, you know, if there's, you know, extra oranges in Florida or, you know, cherries in Michigan, you know, we figure out how to get them here. We also here in Vermont, because of transportation costs and just relationships, a lot of the non, or most of the non-Vermont produce that we distribute comes from Western Harvest in Quebec. Oh, um, oh how, yeah, so, Quebec. Yes. Yeah. Hell, they have worse winters than we do. Yeah, they have a lot of greenhouse <laughs> growing um, they're huge. They, yeah, they distribute all up and down the East Coast. Uh, we buy a lot of seconds from them, and they'll they'll deliver us mixed loads, mixed tractor trailer loads, which is yeah. unusual for large producers. So, um, and you know, it's <clears throat> the the greenhouse gas footprint is much smaller having yeah. stuff come down from Quebec than from Florida oh, or yeah. Texas or California. No, that's uh, that's good. Yeah. And where in Quebec does that? Where do they come from? Do you they know? grow, I think they have huge operations. Like um, hundreds and hundreds of acres. Yeah, or no, thousands, thousands and thousands. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of acres, I think, of greenhouses alone. Yeah. Oh yeah, you yeah. You know, I live right on the border. Well, I haven't been going to Montreal lately at all, <coughs> but you go along <coughs> Auto Route 10, and you see huge fields and yeah. And green, you do see the green out there. I figured that was all going into Montreal or, or over to Toronto or something. But you folks get food in the yeah, and You right. know, the, the, the food that we purchase again, you know, the, the appropriation, the funding request, the food we purchase through Western Harvest, if we buy seconds, um, it's actually about half the cost of buying local, locally grown Vermont produce. But we make the commitment as a food bank to buy as much locally grown food as we can um, because it's important to Vermont. And it's important to the people that we're serving that they're getting food that's grown here in Vermont. Sure. And creating that connection between the food grown here, their health, the, you know, it's more nutritious, it's more nu nutrient dense oh, yeah. and, and fresher. Yeah. And we're, you know, I, I look at it as the food bank, by, by distributing local food, we're actually creating new customers for local farmers. Because the people that are coming to food distributions are going to a food shelf, they're still buying food. Well, sure. and, and when they have the opportunity to, to know that local food is, is, tastes better and looks better and lasts longer, then they're willing to spend a little bit more in the grocery store to purchase that also. And that their kids will like it. I think that's one of yeah. the big things. So, <clears throat> so, um, so besides uh, the budget items, uh, now uh, do you know if the governor included that in, in his budget or is this something mm -hmm. that? Yeah. We don't know. I did, you know, in August have a conversation with 
uh, Commissioner Gresham and his deputy, um, and we presented all the information to them. He, he told me he would talk to the governor about it, um, and I followed up with Adam and, and you know. They don't tell. They don't tell, No, as you know. know. So so we're waiting um, for the governor's budget address also and for the yeah. budget to come out, but, but we have made that request. Yeah, well, it's good uh, to know that uh, because you know, if he only went part way, um, two of us in here also sit on appropriations. So, um, you know, I get used to fight and convince him. We uh, get along pretty well. So One of the handouts that didn't you didn't hear that. So that's <laughs> good. One of the handouts that's in front of you is the detail request that we made to the governor's office yeah. and it has um both information about why we need that funding but information about how we'll spend that funding and like john said you know primarily to purchase from our home fees yep. Yep. and then the cost to distribute those fees. well uh, we've i think in the past we've used the food bank pretty well if my memory serves me mm -hmm. right yes um, yes the and, last few uh, years well been, uh, and and you folks They'll do a good job getting their food out to our citizens, and so I mean it's a good working relationship, I think, all the way around. Yeah, I can't with especially with two appropriations members here. I can miss the opportunity to to say again that, that I know that there are going to be some ARPA funds that are appropriated and not spent, and. Uh, there is a deadline on that, and the food bank is the ultimate in shovel-ready projects. We can get food money out the door, helping Vermonters very quickly. So keep do, that in mind. Do we need a, a processing place uh, of our own here in some ways? I know Hardwick's working or trying yeah. doing it. Yeah. You know what? That's that's a broader conversation, and we are part of the Farm to Plate network. We work very closely. There's there's a whole other food resiliency plan being developed um, with Ellen and some other folks. She's and, coming in. Yeah. Next week. And just so you know, we are we are part of that process yep. and and very much dialed in with those folks. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Richie. Yeah. Um, this is all really quite general. Um, if. if so at some later point, you could highlight what the three million dollars does specifically. I can send you a, a budget. That we yeah, that out. that would be um, helpful because people will ask. Um, they it, it it's on top of base funding, but what does that mean? Right. Yeah, and and just to be clear, the reason we're asking for base funding is very much related yeah. to that forward contracting that we're doing with farm and you know if there's any matching or anything that goes on in this um any of that would be helpful yeah we do have a budget yep okay. yeah we'll follow up with you with that information um uh, irene did you have any anything else yeah. no? thank you so much yeah. uh, do you folks have anything else for us not specifically no but we are here, if you have additional questions, I think yeah. it's a complicated sure. system doing durable food, and yeah. it's very related to feeding Vermonters and other ways too. So don't hesitate to ask if other things come up that we can help answer. Yeah. Constituent yeah. questions. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, we're not Appreciate sure. your time. Yeah. I'm not. No, a little bit. Yeah, I'm a little shy. About that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pull you out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, go ahead. So I. Just from a budgetary standpoint, and I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask well, you. Don't ask the question. Uh, uh, <laughs> Good lawyer. The peanut gallery here. So, um, um, the three million you think is the most vital thing for um, people at risk for food um, that you would be asking for um, for an increase in the budget. Can you can you say a little bit more about that? Did you I understand. Yeah, I, there are other asks around food. There are other asks around foods, that, right. but if I was going to get at people with insecurity, this it must be pretty top top of the list for you guys. It is for us, absolutely yeah. top of the list. Yeah, because you you folks deal with the hubs and in your 
strategically located other than Chittenden County. Right. Right. And I think somebody said that's where all Zion, so that's where I suppose you met with all the people and but a that's great where all, number of Vermonters live in That's where County, all yes. the money is too. Yeah. You know, so that's true. Uh, the uh, <coughs> but as as we move forward through uh, you know this year, if um, there are things that you think we should know about, um, you know, we also will not be shut. Yeah, okay. that's good. That's important. Yeah. There will be changes coming, so we'll keep you posted on those updates. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Well, um, if there are no other also, questions, uh, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.